conference is another milestone in the continuing effort of Filipinos in Canada to look at themselves and their struggle for genuine settlement and integration in this society. Some people, including those within the progressive sectors of the community, have been asking about the significance of the conference and its theme, history, rapture, and continuity. This is actually a legitimate question because we in the progressive Filipino community have been going through a serious process since 2008 of continually defining our place and role in Canada in the context of today's neoliberal globalization and the continuing migration of Filipinos in this country, both as temporary and permanent members of the Canadian working class. We hope that today's conference can help provide some insights in the significance of this title and direction of the progressive Filipino movement in Canada. Filipinos have been coming to live and settle in Canada for over 50 years now. Majority of us have become permanent residents or citizens of this country and continuously make efforts to settle and integrate in this society. While we brought suit cases full of memories and reminders of our country of origin, we had also unpacked these suit cases and filled them with new memories and experiences about our struggle for a place in this country. Today, we will try to unpack once more our suitcases, throw away the unnecessary contents, and fill them with new and important aspects of our continuing struggle for genuine settlement, integration, participation, and entitlement in this country. Our history of migration into this country began and moved parallel with the initial phase of neoliberal globalization in the 1960s, with the so-called golden age of capitalism that started right after the end of World War II, began to lose its luster. In order to address the challenges of slowing capital accumulation and stagnating profitability, global capital needed an economic restructuring on a global scale that included structural adjustment programs or SAPs, imposed on countries of the South like the Philippines by the tandem of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. The key policy components of these structural adjustment programs are liberalization of trade and investments, privatization of public assets and, is and institutions, the regulation of government controls on social policies, including environmental protection and the denationalization of public properties and resources. After years of implementation, the result of these policies saw the further deterioration of the economies of the countries and the degradation of the environment. People were losing control of their lands and resources to the inversions and acquisitions of global corporations and their local counterparts. The inability of these countries to absorb their growing workforce forced them to export their working people to become commodities in the global labor market and as internationally shared human resource for cheap and expendable labor power. This out-migration of Filipino working class, majority of who are women, work for the benefit of both governments of the Philippines and Canada. Their earnings abroad bring much needed foreign currency into the Philippines, thus helping prop up its debt-laden economy. This also prevents social unrest from escalating when these working people leave their country of origin and their remittances help pay for foreign loans. It is also a boon for Canada as it avails itself of cheap and temporary labor power to become globally competitive. Both countries encourage this global movement of people since they are productive and help keep both economies going smoothly. But because of their status, they are generally excluded from participating and influencing in the economic and political discourses 
in their in either countries. Thus, labor export program of sending countries and the foreign workers program are functional to the economies of the sending and receiving countries. In the meantime, these global working people are kept in a constant state of impermanence or temporariness, always looking for a home to stay and settle permanently on a long-term basis. Prior to 2008, there were two interrelated political narratives facing progressive Filipinos in Canada, addressing their rights and, and struggle to settle permanently in this country and continuing as part of the struggle for social transformation in the home country, the Philippines. At that time, the struggle in the Philippines for social transformation was the dominant narrative, while the struggle for settlement in Canada was simmering in the background. There was this notion then that the home is still in the country of origin and that staying and working abroad is only temporary. Efforts should, should therefore be, be made towards eventually going home to the Philippines where the resolution of our issues as foreign workers will be resolved. But as more Filipinos become permanent residents and citizens, this dominant narrative began to be challenged. For most Filipinos, Canada is now home, and such the struggle should be here. Second and third generation Filipino Canadians are staking their claims in this society for full participation and entitlement, while newly arrived immigrants campaign for genuine settlement and integration. Our future in this country, and even in the Philippines, would now depend on our struggle here in solidarity with the rest of Canadian working people. A rupture had to be made with this past dominant narrative of privileging the work of resolving social contradictions in the country of origin over the work of our settlement and integration in Canadian society. In the spring of 2008, a group of progressive Filipinos made the decision to make the change in its political narrative and direction. It affirmed its past studies, research, and investigations that Filipinos in Canada must go beyond the community and work to create a new path toward genuine settlement and integration in Canadian society. A review of our history of migration needs to be done, and this must be integrated into the history of the struggle of the Canadian working class for radical transformation. In the age of neoliberal globalization, while the Filipino worker may, be, may, may take on the identity of a transnational working class, he or she is at the same time rooted within the identity of the general Canadian working class. Filipinos in Canada are therefore part of the struggle in Canada for radical social transformation. Our struggle as immigrants for genuine settlement and integration, full participation and entitlement are components of this worker struggle. This rupture from the past was officially launched in 2010 with the formation of the Congress of Progressive Filipino Canadians and the launching of counter spin conferences in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. In these events, we reiterated our new narrative of creating and nurturing a new path for the progressive Filipino Canadian community. We said, and I quote, some of our key statements. A new path of genuine settlement and integration is emerging in the progressive Filipino Canadian community. This is the path leading to full participation and entitlement in a multi-ethnic and multicultural society within a world that is facing the crisis of neoliberal, neoliberalization and the crisis of environmental degradation and climate change. 
As progressive Filipino Canadians, we will continue to be critical of Canada's official settlement and, integ and integration programs. We will strive to create a new path of genuine settlement and integration that struggles against our economic marginalization and social exclusion, a new path that struggles against systemic racism, a new path that struggles to achieve women's equality and development, and a new path that struggles that would ensure the future of our youth. It is a new path that would lead to our full participation and entitlement in all aspects of Canadian society. It is a new path that makes part of the broader process of helping build the socialist movement in Canada, anti-imperialist solidarity, and global environmental change and sustainability. Even as we change our political direction after making a break with the past, our struggle for social change will and must continue. Today's conference is part of that continuity. It is worth mentioning here that our member organization in Toronto is also continuing its struggle for change and social transformation. Today, they are launching their photo exhibit in Toronto as part of developing and building a progressive culture of resistance and transformation. We bring our support and solidarity to them even as they also express their, su their support and solidarity with our activity here. In closing, I would like to re reiterate the significance of this conference. After years of working with the Filipino community and non-Filipino allies, our network of progressive Filipino organization has finally come home. We have come to realize that our struggle for social change and transformation is right here in Canada, even as we continue to be in solidarity with the struggle for social change and liberation of other people in other parts of the world. We have settled accounts in our history of migration in Canada, made the rupture with our past political narrative, and continue the struggle for social change and transformation as part of the Canadian and international working class. Thank you. Thank you.